never was big into hiking. Now, don't get me wrong. I get it. Like going down trails, being one with nature, enjoying the weather. All this is great. But when I think of hiking, I think about long excursions into very remote areas. And when you get long exposure to nature, what happens? Hunger, fatigue, bug bites, you know what I mean? And, then, and, and not to mention, it depends how remote you go. There could be some danger too. We're going to react to a story from Spook today about hiking. A horror story, naturally, from one of my favorite narrators. Guys, make sure to subscribe to Spook, then let's get into this reaction. Oh, it might be a couple stories here. Cool. My name is Mikhail, and I what live up, in Mikhail? a remote part of Lapland in Sweden. Lapland. I've lived here for my whole life, love to visit and a lot of scary stories and folklore gets passed around in these parts, mm -hmm. especially in rural areas. Mm -hmm. I was never really big on the whole idea, though. Sure. Everyone likes a good ghost story or monster story, love but I was always a skeptic to these allegations, right. just like my parents were. Yeah. My parents had moved from city life in Sundsvall to here, so Sundsvall. they just thought that these stories were just that. Right. Stories. Yeah. I did too, and I think I can still say I can, but I'm not sure about that anymore. All right. <laughs> you see, a couple of years ago, I went hiking and camping on my own up north to a relatively flat woodland untouched area. Scary with all what these What was weird snow, about man. this spot was that no one really came to it. Right. Maybe there was a bear or something there, but Very I checked, dangerous. and no such thing had ever been reported. And if you have so a little accident, you can thought, freeze to death. Hey. This just means a more relaxing camping trip. Yeah. And it was a relaxing trip, to be fair. I do love camping now. When I got there, I well, like to go with friends, as far as the roads family. would take me, it seemed so peaceful. And not too rough. There was a thick sleep. layer of snow everywhere. <laughs> I'm a camper And it camper. covered the landscape like icing on a cake. Okay. The Swedish winter was it's coming. beautiful, man. And because of this, I completely misjudged the amount of time I would have to find a spot in daylight. Right. As the sun was already a short way away mm. from the setting. Gotcha. I searched for a while to find a good spot in the woods to pitch up. Kay. About a good hour or so. The forest floor was too bumpy. Mm. You could hardly pitch yourself up without encountering a slope or two. Right. There was nowhere, and it was too late to start heading back to the more Dang. flat area that surrounded the forest. Right. So, the only way was to go forward. Mm. After all, the perfect spot could just be around the corner. <laughs> oh, well, bump, Pushing it at night. It was getting dark right very dark i could see the stars start to shine through wow. and i was now having to use my flashlight at least the you good had news a was that the landscape was starting to flatten out good give it a good dozen meters forward i could pitch up my tent sure but that's when i saw it strung down from the largest tree around were several star-shaped objects made from twigs strung and held down together in by the fluffy trees. string this tree okay. was old too and its roots didn't even fully embed themselves into the ground. All right. But this wasn't too surprising. I have encountered many of these objects around the places where people camp and hike. And okay. quite frankly, it's obvious they are just made from the people who want to scare the odd traveler. Ah. Uh. I would have happily set up my tent at the same site, but it was just too ominous and creepy. Yeah. I had seen these things dozens of times. And I don't believe in the existence of the supernatural. You're trying to get some so superstition why was I going. away from the area. People would do this to scare I other I didn't people. know at the time, nor do I even know why now. I just walked away from it and set okay. up camp another dozen or so meters away. I mean, if you feel weird about something, that that's night. normal. It was always right? the feeling of anxiousness right. while you were camping alone. You were kind of thinking about that, plus you were alone. But... This was too obnoxious to be discarded by a professional. Right. I felt as if I was being watched from oh. the shadows, behind the trees, maybe even my own plastic tent window. Huh. The little dreams I had were plagued by visions of dark figures watching and scurrying around my sight. Paranoia? But even when I got too spooked out and went to go check around in real life, there was nothing there. Right. I was alone. But I had the constant feeling of intrusion. Man. When I woke, things weren't too great either. That is a weird feeling. I didn't notice it until I had gotten fully dressed and started to eat breakfast. Okay. But on a nearby tree was some kind of artifact. 
like the objects that hung down from the large tree near Is where that I camped. that a sock? But it or was a pair of socks? And right. the center of two socks. That's like some stunned. witchcraft type stuff, man. Those were my socks. Bruh. The one I had worn the previous day. Hanging from... I got the chills so bad right now. It. Can you imagine, dude? I got out of there as fast as I could. It's like occasionally it makes freaking you think out occult, and scanning the area you know? for anyone nearby who could have done this. Dude. But there was no one. It was only until I left the forest and got to the road. I looked behind me, and standing just at the tree oh line was God. a shadowy figure just watching me. Somebody was watching. I swear I ran a marathon that day. I guess so. I don't believe in witchcraft or ghosts or anything like that but every time i think about this i feel like i'm starting to believe it was something truly supernatural oh my god dude i you know if it was just a person that was trying to scare you or had very my name is jake intent, and i live like in upstate washington you, right it could Cascadia have been a yourself beautiful in a tent. place but quite remote par this is beautiful in seattle so mm. many places can become abandoned I love especially seattle. in the more environmental parts of the region me and my friend Daniel decided it would be a good idea to hey, go exploring funny. these places <laughs> for his birthday. Okay, cool. Just the two cool. of us. Yeah. We loved hiking, and still do to this day. But after this, we have become much more cautious. Mm. Some of his friends told him there was an abandoned mansion if we went far enough. Oh, And wow. that there might still be some old, valuable stuff lying around in it. What? A good bug would do us nicely. And it wasn't like Daniel didn't want to cash in more money at his birthday. I mean... So we were dead set on going That there. sounds very his ominous. His birthday came, and it was a pretty cool day, I'll say that. Uh-huh. The party was alright. Daniel even got some girls to come. But then, it was our time to head out. Yeah. So it wouldn't get too dark when we were coming back. Okay. The mansion was very secluded, but the roads were kept trimmed. Even if most of them were practically dirt paths. Right. It was also quite clean. The old bushes weren't too large, and there were no vines or growths spreading this up the walls. This place is kind of kept up. The windows were broken, and it seemed like most of the paint had stayed on the walls. And this was Maybe supposedly abandoned? Discoloration. I don't know. It was obvious the mansion was old, but right. what was weird was that it definitely didn't seem abandoned. Yeah. The parking lot was empty, but it felt as if cars had been there recently. Uh-huh. Something ain't right to me. Daniel said. Right. Let's go hide somewhere and watch for a bit. <laughs> so we can see if anyone will come here. Before That's we probably go the in. best bet. If you we set up dead set on exploring this place, was, stake it out for first. the better amount of a good hour. Right. I started to become restless at this point. Mm -hmm. What was Nothing the point happened. of looking out when clearly the house was abandoned, mm -hmm. as no one had even passed the road that held the offshoot to here? I don't know. Dan, seriously, I'm getting tired of waiting. Can we just go in and look around, or go home, or go see that place uh, Lucy told us about? Not rush it's it. obvious this place is abandoned. Because as I soon said, as you go in, cleaning under my fingernails. Ah, uh, fine. Let's just go inside for a bit. But I want to get out of here before dusk. All right. Oh this yeah. This place seems too clean to be abandoned. Absolutely. Daniel replied, and so we went in. See, with that kind of logic, was unlocked, surprisingly, you'd have to but be once cautious. We got in, things went from weird to creepy. Okay. There was nothing inside. No furniture, no carpets, nothing. What a strange... Just some muddy boot marks in the hallway. That's a strange the design on the, the left side right there. Where the back door was. So we Looks decided like to hand. go upstairs. <laughs> maybe Very scary looking. Pickings. The owners of the estates put everything upstairs. As All to right. make it look like from the ground floor that there was nothing to steal. Gotcha. But there was nothing up there either. Not even boot marks. Okay. Oddly, the place was kept well dusted, though. It had been cleaned out. We searched out. the entire three-story house and found nothing. Really? Even some of the light bulbs were missing. So, who was getting been dark, staying there? And Daniel was stuff. becoming anxious. Maybe they're kind of renovating. We were on the top floor when two black cars pulled into the driveway and their headlights fully on. Oh no! We quickly turned off our flashlights and hid in a corner. Oh my god! They walked dude. through the entrance and out the back door, talking all the way. Okay. They were dressed in dark robes. Each with different weird symbols. They were having some back. ceremonies we in there or something. Look, but it sounded like they lit a bonfire out back uh -huh. and started chanting in some weird accent. Oh my god, dude, understand. can you imagine? We needed to deck it and fast. Yes. But how are we going to leave without them hearing? Right. Maybe someone is down there checking that no one pulls in here, Bruh. Daniel nervously said. We don't know how long they're going to be here. And what if they come up here later on? Right. There will be no escape then. Right. I said. 
We eventually continued to come down the stairs, but quietly, yeah. listening for any sound coming our way. Dude. Once we got to the bottom, however, there was no sound. Okay. They had stopped chanting. Uh oh. We stood still and we stood silent. I'm ready for Suddenly, jump scare. A loud voice shouted something like Heretia. And we ran as fast as we could, Heretia. sprinting out the front door and into the woods, all the while hearing thundering footsteps behind us. What the us. heck is Heretia? After a while, we lost them and hid in a pretty wow, overgrown patch near dude. the road. They searched with flashlights even riding in their cars along the road, uh -huh. but they did not find us. Dude. We stayed there the majority of the night <laughs> and got home safely, <laughs> saving a few scratches and being exhausted. Lucky, lucky, man. That sounded like some sort of ritual that was going on. And granted, if even if you were doing something innocent and you were just using that place, what if they owned it? You never know what those people would do in there but if you saw some trespassers that were clearly kids or mischief makers and they ran away i i would try to find them too you know who knows what they did you know and something like that it, it's it's kind of like if somebody would try to be vandalizing you know uh, most people would just call the cops or whatever clearly this place it wasn't exactly like somebody's house that they were using to live but i don't know it's it's kind of crazy I, I i think they made the right decision and got the heck out of there though but going in it, it was a bad decision in the first place <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this is folks make sure to subscribe to him as well as a couple other reaction videos that i've done thanks so much for watching as always this is Ulgen signing off we'll see you next time Break it down.